I told you I fully understand the assignment tonight. We're going to be in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. I want you to get there real quick because I ain't come to play tonight. <clears throat> Mark chapter 5. <sighs> Listen, I'll be honest with you. I don't know how to preface this. Um, I, I don't know how to set this up. I know where I need to go. I know the bottom line. Um, I know the big picture. But I'm not sure how we're going to get there tonight. I'm going to just be honest with you. Um, so y'all just bear with me as I try to set this up for you uh, because I know what needs to be done tonight. Um, I know that tonight, um, whether you're the person who you are dealing with a stronghold and you don't even know that you're dealing with a stronghold, um, you're not even aware of what's going on in your life. You just know that something is a little bit off, but I can't quite identify it. Um, if you're the person who knows what the problem is, but you don't have the strength in and of yourself to conquer whatever the problem is. If you're the person that you think that everything is going pretty well, uh, but you've just not quite tapped into your full potential. All of those in each of those um, you 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 on the right stream tonight in Mark chapter five. Mark chapter five. <clears throat> Man, listen, God, help me get this out tonight. In Mark chapter five, this is what it says. <clears throat> then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Watch this, y'all. Who had his dwelling among the tombs. Another um, in, in one of the other gospels, it says that he was naked. He didn't wear any clothes and he lived in the tombs and not in houses. It says in verse three, who had his dwelling among the tombs and no one could bind him not even with chains because he had often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces neither the shackles um, um neither could anyone tame him we have a man who couldn't been tamed we have a man who could not be bound not even by physical shackles, right? Because every time he was bound, he would break them. God help us tonight. Watch this. In verse five, and always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. This is where it gets really interesting, y'all. This is where there's a plot twist in the whole story. I'm sure that up to this point, we can all relate. Um, either us or maybe somebody we knew before we got delivered, right? Before our life was changed. Or maybe this is you on the stream tonight and you're like, hey, I'm the person. I'm, I'm the one that needs deliverance. I'm the one who's in the chains right now. So we can we, we either know or we can see or we've been that person in this situation. This is where the plot twist happens. In verse six, it says, when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshiped him. Y'all listen. It says, when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshiped him. Y'all know this story already. Y'all y'all already know. I mean, you you know because you're familiar with this passage that this man is demon possessed, right? He's have he has supernatural spiritual strength to be able to break the chains. He is un tameable but yet and still when jesus shows up on the scene it doesn't say that he ran away from jesus it doesn't say that he was fearful of jesus it doesn't say that he went and hid in shame it says that he actually ran and worshiped him oh my god y'all follow this in this there is an amazing revelation about what some of us do on a weekly basis in our worship services as we show up to church worshiping with our hands up and it looks like we're free, but still in bondage. Opening up our mouths, singing out these songs to God, yet and still going home in chains. Dancing around in the aisles, but still got shackles on our spiritual feet. This man was shackled and kept breaking the chains, was bound by the spirit of the demonic forces, yet still found some kind of strength within himself to worship God. This was torment. Pastor Ty, how in the world can I worship God and it feel like torment? Uh, y'all don't got to go too far. Some, some of y'all, some of y'all on this stream, you ain't too far. You, you are not too far removed from deliverance. And you know what it feels like to come into the worship service, to sing out, to lift up your hands, to lay on your face, but to still leave out void of power. 
That's what it means. This man came and laid down and he worshiped God, yet he was without power. This man came and dropped at Jesus's feet, even though he was demon possessed and he worshiped God. But yet he still went back to the same chains that bound him. Y'all know what it feels like to come into church. And the reason that it hurts so much is because you feel like you're so close to God. Yet without power. So close to God, but yet I can't touch him. So close to God, yet my situation when I go home is still the same. So close to God, yet I still feel like I'm going through the same crap that I've been going through for years, even though I worship him every single week. Man, that, that, that torment is worse than physical chains. That torment is worse than slavery itself, the slavery in your mind. That torment is worse than the shackles on your feet, knowing that I can worship God, yet still go back to the shackles that held me before I laid at his feet. Oh, my God, y'all. Listen, I'm going somewhere with this. That ain't even that. That's not even a part where I want to. That's not even a part that I want to harp on tonight. Verse seven. And he cried out with a loud voice and he said, what have I had to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you, do not torment me. Don't torment me. Skip down a little bit. We know how this goes in verse eight. For he said, come out, the man unclean spirit. Then he said to him, what is your name? He answered, saying to him. My name is Legion. Jesus said, come out. He said, but wait a minute, let's talk for a minute. <clears throat> he said, what's your name? He's talking to the man. He says, what's your name? We know that he's talking to the man, because if you read a few verses down below, then it says we are many. It says, then he said to them, then he says they, right? It references them collectively. But he asked the man, he said, what's your name? And he answered, legion, for I am many. It's pretty clear, I've said this before, that his issue had become his identity. That the thing that he was dealing with, now he could not, he didn't have anything to divide his issue from his identity. Everything was muddied. Everything was blurred together. And so every time he, you, every time you make a mistake, you think that that's who you are. Every time you fall short, you think that that's identi your identity. Every, every, every time you do something wrong, you, you, you feel this guilt and this shame overwhelm you because you think that it's, it's who you are. You think that it defines you. You think your mistake defines you. You think because I didn't pray for an hour, then shame comes over you and, and I'm no longer a spiritual woman of God. I'm no longer a man of valor because I didn't read my Bible for five hours a day and you allow shame to take over your life. You allow condemnation to take over the place where conviction of the Holy Spirit once resided. It says, my name is Legion. This is now my identity. This is all I know. Everybody around me is afraid of me because I'm cutting myself, because I'm breaking the chains, because I can't be tamed. So everybody around me is fearful of me. Who am I talking to tonight? Maybe the person you're saying, Pastor Ty, I'm not demon possessed. Pastor Ty, I'm not the person who's struggling in this area, but who am I talking to tonight where you feel like, man, you know what, Pastor Ty, I know that there's more to me. I know that I have purpose. I know that I'm living beneath my spiritual privilege, yet and still somehow I find myself bound. I can't quite figure out my identity. I don't quite know where I belong. And some days it's like little tricklets of purpose where I feel like I'm in purpose. And some days I feel like I'm lost. Some days I feel like I'm doing the right thing. And some day I feel like I got it all messed up. Some days I can hear the voice of God speaking to me. But other days I feel like this man ain't even a rock's throw in distance. Who am I talking to tonight? He said, what's your name? Who are you? He says, my name is Legion. For we are many. Yeah, it's not just one issue. It's a bunch of them. Because every time I felt like I dealt with one, here comes another one. Y'all, we got to get some people delivered tonight. We're going to talk about it. We're going to get to the root of it. What, what, what? He, he says, what is your name? He says, my name is Legion. We are many. There's a lot going on in here. I fell down. I worship you. I recognize that you're Jesus. I know that you're the Christ. I know I know that at your name, we're going to bow. At, you know, every knee is going to bow at the at the name of. Je I know all of that about you. But right now I'm dealing with some stuff that kind of has me grip. I'm dealing with a stronghold right now that is much stronger than me. And I need help. This man came and fell at Jesus's feet. It's his way of saying, I, I don't know what else to do. Won't nobody else help me with this. They've left me out here by myself. 
I don't know what else to do. I feel like I'm stuck. I feel like I'm stuck. I know that there's more. I know that I have purpose. I know that I have an identity. I know that I have an actual name, but I don't know what that is right now. Everything is money. Y'all, listen, what I've said so far ain't even what I want to get to. We about to get into the meat of it right now. And I ain't even going to be talking here tonight long. We're about to get into the meat of it right here. This is what it says. It says in verse 11, now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him saying, send us into the swine. I don't have time to break all of that down right now. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There are about 2,000. I, I don't have time to talk about that tonight. 2,000, right? The herd ran violently down the steep place, um, a uh, place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled. This is the key part. Those who fed the swine fled and they told it to the city and in the country and they went out to see what it was that had happened. This is the key part and this is the meat of what I wanted to get to tonight. It says, then they came to Jesus, saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. Listen, y'all. <clears throat> These last four words. It says, and they were. It doesn't say they were excited for him. It doesn't say they celebrated him. It doesn't say they lifted up their hands. It doesn't say that they had a great big celebration. It doesn't say that they had a deliverance service and, 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 and they had a great big party because the, the, the son that was lost is now found. The daughter that was once wayward, now she's finally come home. You would have thought that they grew a great big, uh, a great big celebration because the person who was once bound is now free. The one who was once shackled is now not shackled anymore. He, is, he has finally got his spiritual freedom. And it says that the people were afraid gosh the people were afraid the people were afraid of him being in his right mind the people were afraid of him being clothed the people were afraid of him being able to talk eloquently the people were afraid of him knowing his identity and now knowing his name. The people were afraid of him now being admitted back into the general population. They were afraid that he might go back into what they knew. They were afraid because they had given him an identity. And that's all they knew about him. And so now that he had tapped into his actual purpose, they were afraid. They were fearful. I don't know how many people are around you. I don't know how many, fam how many family members are around you. I don't know how many coworkers are around you who don't know who you are. And they have given you a label. And as long as you function in that label, everything is cool. As, as long as you function within our control, then everything is cool. As long as you can be tamed, or even if you can't be tamed, as long as you keep your distance then we're cool. As long as you're beneath me, then we're cool. As long as I'm over top of you and I always got a leg up, we're cool. As long as I make a little bit more money than you, we're cool. As long as you live in the projects and we live out in the suburbs, then, then we're cool. As long as I can box you in, then we're cool. But once you actually discover your God-given purpose and your God-given identity, once you actually get delivered and you actually find out who you are, then it makes people around you afraid because they can't handle you no more. Because they can't tame you anymore. Because they no longer have a category to put you in. Because they have to take their minds off of who they thought you were. It says that a prophet is without honor only, only in his own home. Because in his own home, we know how to treat you. We know who you came from. We know how you were brought up. We were raised in the same house. How is it that you're a prophet and I'm just a, I'm, I just clean the trash? We were brought up in the same neighborhood. How is it that you got out and I'm still here? We were brought up in the same uh, education system. How is, it that, how is it that you got five degrees, but I'm still struggling to get a high school education? You got people around you that would try to tame you. Y'all, we ain't even talking about race. We ain't even talking about civil rights. We ain't even talking about slavery. We ain't even talking about how the most feared thing, how, 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 the, how the thing that people are most afraid of is somebody of color with education. 
that the thing that somebody is most afraid of is somebody who is young. They say, all right, you know, wait till you get a little bit older, then you could do it. Oh, you too little, you too young. But somebody who is young and embraces their identity at a young age, right? Somebody who embraces the call of God on their life and begins to prophesy even at the age of 13. Somebody who begins to walk in their God-given identity and lay hands on the sick and see them recover even at the tender age of 18 or 21. I'm talking about what people who would try to box you in because they have laid labeled you by your issue yeah he got a stutter he ain't gonna be much yeah she ain't have her father in her life so i i, I know she ain't on the mount to anything yeah their marriage ain't gonna never work because they come from a broken household yeah i know they ain't gonna never get free because they've been this is a generational curse this has been passed down through the lineage and so this is something they just gonna have to deal with for the rest of their life and they're gonna pass down their kids too it says that the people were afraid because this man got free. They were afraid because he was clothed and in his right mind. They were afraid. They were fearful. They didn't want him to stay there. You would imagine that the people would rejoice. You would imagine that people would see Jesus for who he is, a deliverer. You would imagine that they would celebrate this man. You would imagine that they would embrace him back into the general population. You would imagine that they would throw a party for him or something. But they were afraid. Because people are afraid of what they don't understand. Who am I talking to tonight, y'all? People are afraid of what they don't understand. And here's the crazy part. You might be streaming tonight. You might say, Pastor Ty, man, you know what? I, 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 I'm, I'm actually afraid myself because I don't even understand me. Sometimes I trip myself out. So, sometimes I don't even get what's going on in my own life. And so sometimes I'm afraid of the call. of Oh, my God, let's talk about it. Sometimes I'm afraid of the actual call of God on my life because I don't know what that entails. I don't know where he's going to send me. I don't know where he's going to call me. I don't know what that, that road will lead to. And so sometimes I give God a, a halfway yes. God, if you show me, I'll do it. God, if you just if you just give me the big picture and then I'll be obedient. God, if you just give me a little bit at a time, then I'll do it. No, God needs your yes even before he shows it to you. You'll always be afraid of what you don't understand. But if you understand that God is in control, then you won't have to be afraid of it. You won't have to be fearful of it. You can embrace your purpose and walk in confidence. You can walk in boldness. I want to talk to somebody tonight that feels bound. Somebody that feels restricted. Somebody who maybe feels like that, that generational curse has hit your life, has hit your family, and you don't know how to break it. For somebody, a habit that you've not been able to shake. For somebody who has been in a rut in your spiritual gifts or maybe, maybe in your talents and you don't know how they're going to be used because you can't quite seem to get them off the ground. Somebody who's put a business plan into action, but you're not seeing anything happen. I need to talk to you tonight that God desires to deliver you in the same way that this man was shackled, in the same way that this man was out of his mind, in the same way that this man was, was pushed away from the general population, that God wants to deliver you in the same way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says in verse 13, verse 16, and those who saw it told them how it had happened to him and who had been demon possessed and about the swine. Then they began to plead with him. They're talking about Jesus at them point. This point is that they begin to plead with him. They said, Jesus, we need you to leave this region. Jesus, we need you to get out of here. Oh, my God. Somebody can understand this part. Somebody can see yourself in this part. They said they said, Jesus, um, you're disturbing the peace. We 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 we, we have a, a, a nice um, we, we 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 have a nice set of laws in place. Um, we got a nice system in place um, that keeps the people out that we want kept out. Y'all got to read between the lines of what I'm saying this evening. We have a nice system in place that would keep people at bay that we don't want in our inner workings. We have a nice little system that we've established that's been working pretty good that once you get caught up in the system, you'll never get out of the system. We got a nice little system at work right now that allows us to enjoy our comfort and our complacency without having to deal with the lower class. We have a nice little system in place right now that puts labels on crazy people and once you have that label, then I don't see you as nothing else other than crazy. I don't see you as nothing else other than an alcoholic alcoholic other than what you have been susceptible to for all of your life 
says we already got a system. And Jesus, right now, you're messing up our system. You're delivering people that we wanted to see in chains forever. You're letting people, oh my Jesus, hallelujah. I believe that we got some chain breakers on this stream tonight. I believe that we got some people who are going to say the buck stops here. Hallelujah, glory to God. I believe that we have some people here tonight that will begin to walk in their God-given identity, that will begin to uh, exercise their God-given authority and begin to cast out demons that is coming down their lineage, that will begin to speak to depression over their li- over their own lives even as they speak it out of others that you will not be complacent with the people around you just living life and going through the motion but everybody that you come in contact with you want to see them free you want to see your brother free you want to see your sister free you want to see your siblings free you want to see your family set free you want to see your friend you want to see your co-workers everybody who I come in contact with I want to see them free and that makes me a problem in the spirit Hallelujah. That makes me a problem in the spirit. Just like they did to Jesus. They said, Jesus, you're a problem to our system. You're, 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 you're messing up what we have. You're messing up our order. We got people that we need to stay in bondage for a reason. And every time that you set people free, you're messing up our system. Every time you set people free, you're messing up our money. Those pigs cost money. That swine was the equivalent to money. He said, you're messing up our money. Our pigs now are dead. You're messing up our economy. We need you to leave. We need you to get out of here, right? Because you're messing up our system. You're messing up our structure. You're messing up the people that we have that are enslaved to our system. I don't know about y'all, but I'm no longer satisfied with seeing people just walk around enslaved. I'm no longer satisfied with just seeing people walking around depressed oppressed uh with feelings of anxiety um um with 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 bitterness with with unforgiveness i'm no longer i'm no longer okay with you just being okay and if that means that i'm gonna have to suffer the attacks that come my way then so be it because i know that greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world i know that god personally through his son Jesus Christ his blood spilled on the cross stands and marks my door that evil has to pass over Satan we are not afraid of you we are not fearful of you and we call you out by your name fear you have to go right now anxiety you have to go right now selfishness you have to go right now depression you are cast out in the name of Jesus oppression we are casting you into the pit of hell even right now I thank you Lord even for 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 mental um for 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 mental cavities father I thank you that you are filling up even right now I thank you that you are setting the captives free this evening father and that you are calling it out by its root father I thank you I thank you father that people on this stream tonight are taking their rightful place that they are mounting up that the time is now that the loss will not remain lost any longer father I thank you that we are going after the loss hallelujah glory to God thank you Jesus Satan we're not afraid of you we're not scared of you and anybody who desires to go free can be free tonight hallelujah thank you Jesus yep I see you we're disruptors in the spirit we're disrupting the system disrupting the habits disrupting the generational curses hallelujah thank you jesus i know sometimes we focus so much on the generational curses but have you not read that the blessings of god right that a generation of righteousness the generation of the righteous will be passed down for a thousand generations have y'all not read that in your bibles Hallelujah, that we can break the curse. Not only are we breaking the curse, but we're releasing blessings over our generation, blessings over our generation's generations, blessings over our children's children's children and for a thousand generations because we chose to break the curse. I wish that somebody would be an ambassador and to go after the loss, not just in your family, but go after your neighbor. I wish that somebody would go after their friends, that somebody would go after their extended family, their cousins. I pray that somebody would go after your co-workers, maybe even total strangers that you meet, that the curse would be broken over their lives. Hallelujah. I am ministering to curse breakers tonight and for those who desire to be delivered. I'm talking to you tonight. Who needs to be free? 
Rama si ele la mandio ko raba basa yele de baso ye. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can be free tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you're already free, I'm charging up the atmosphere for somebody who needs to lay hands on somebody else. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'll end on this note right here. This is what it says in verse 18. It says, and when he got into the boat, he who had been demon possessed begged him that he might be with him. He said, Jesus, I want to go with you. You're the one that set me free. I want to run with you. God, I want to go wherever you are. I want to be with you. God, if you send me to the nations, that's where I'm going to go. You set me free. How many of y'all on here got a testimony? Hallelujah. The God set you free. You like, God, whatever you tell me to do, I'm doing. I'm your slave. I don't, I don't care if people look at me crazy because I said that I'm your slave. I'm your, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. God, whatever, wherever you want me to go, that's where I'm going to go. But to you tonight, God might be saying the thing to you that he said to this, to this man who had just been delivered. Y'all follow me on this part. I hope I don't lose anybody here tonight. It says uh, the, 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 the man possessed, he begged him in verse 18 uh, that he might be with him. And Jesus said, however, Jesus did not permit him. But he said to him, go home. Yeah. He said, go home. Y'all put it in all caps in the comments. Put, go home. Go home. Yep. He said, go home. He didn't say, yeah, come with me so I can I can tell your testimony to the nations. Right. Um, he, he didn't even necessarily say, hey, go on social media and publish it to everybody. That'd be great. Let, let, let the nations hear your testimony. He didn't say, hey, now I'm going to send you uh, out to do all of these outreaches so all of the cities and all the different towns can hear your message. He said, go home. He said, go home. He said, go home to your friends. Tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion. He said, go home. He said, because the people in your own home need to hear it most. I know y'all don't want to hear this message. You say, man, I'm trying to get away from them heathens. I'm trying to get away from them people who don't understand God. I'm trying to get away from them people who's always drinking and smoking and cussing. and having sex. I'm trying to get away from all of that. God, why you want to send me home to the, to the same people that vex me, to the same people that disturb my peace, to the same people that drive me nuts, to the same people that I spent 20 years trying to get away from, to the same people who have tried to help me captive for so many years. And you want to send me back to those same people. Yeah. He says, go home. Go home. Because the people at home, they know your testimony better than anybody. Because they saw you when you were at your worst. Now they need to see you at your best. They saw you when you were addicted, but now they need to see you free. They saw you when you were struggling. Now they need to see you thriving. They saw you when you were strung out on drugs. Now they need this. Oh, my God. Now they need to see that you have been made brand new. They saw you when you were sleeping around. Now they need to see you living holy. They saw you when you used to cuss people out. Now they need to see you walking in meekness. Who am I talking to tonight? You have a testimony, but you need to go home. If they don't see it at home, why am I send you to the nations and you ain't even going in your own backyard? Why am I going to send you overseas and you ain't even talking to people in your neighborhood? Why am I going to send you to total strangers and you ain't even talking to your own family? Because those are the ones that need to see it most. They need to see the change in you. Man, I knew who you was back then. I knew what you used to do. So I understand that what happened in your life must be a real transformation because I saw who you was before the transformation. I saw you BC. I knew you. And now I feel like I don't know you no more. I want to give you a heads up. They might be afraid. They might get scared. Because people try to chain what they can't contain. Y'all don't got no, nice, no, no notes tonight. Holy Spirit is talking. People try to chain what they can't contain. If you have a pet, if you have a dog, if you have a Rockweiler specifically, if you have a pet lion, if you have a lizard, yeah, alligator, whatever you got, if you got an elephant, whatever you have that is beyond what you can contain, you got to put a chain on it. You got to put a rope on it. You got to put a fence around it. You have to contain what you can't, we have to train what you can't contain. Mm, oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't take it personally. Don't take it personally if they don't receive you. Don't take it personally if they become afraid. Don't take it personally if they get timid because everybody can't understand. Everybody won't understand your true identity. I put, oh my God, I put it like this. 
For some of you, it might be your own parents. The people that actually gave birth to you might not even understand your, your, your true purpose and your true identity. Yeah, they gave birth. Yes, God may have showed some, them some things, maybe even in the spirit about you. Maybe they saw some of your giftings and talents coming out at a young age, but the only person knows your true identity and your, your overall, your big picture purpose is God. That's it. As much as God can use prophets to prophesy, the only one that knows it is God. As much as I feel like I know my kids better than anybody else, even I don't know. God knows their purposes. God knows their true identity. Hallelujah. I think I've said enough tonight. I want to pray for y'all. I want to pray for each individual under the sound of my voice. I thank you that you would begin to embrace your true God-given identity and authority. That you would no longer walk around timid, tiptoeing around your purpose. That you'll no longer be sitting around waiting for you to have enough power to start. But you'll walk in your delegated authority that you have been given that comes custom made and custom fit for your personalized gifts. God, I thank you for each individual under the sound of my voice that they would mount up, that they'll rise up. That they would take their God-given position in the name of Jesus. I thank you that fear would no longer have its place in their mind. That anxiety, that toil will no longer remain. God, I thank you that they'll embrace it and that they'll, yep, that's it, that they'll walk heavy. Somebody type it in and say, walk heavy, walk heavy, walk heavy. God, I thank you that they'll walk heavy unapologetically. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just the way that you have made them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you that their true colors will ring out. Father, I thank you that the potency of their anointing will come with their authenticity. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, I thank you that they won't be fearful. I thank you that they won't back down. I thank you that they won't shy away from it. Father, I thank you that with every step of obedience that you'll break and destroy the yokes of bondage over their lives. Even things that are hidden that they don't know is a hindrance. Father, I thank you that you'll reveal. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And that the only labels that they'll receive is joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Is that they are loved. Is that they are anointed. Is that they are powerful beyond imagination. That they are clothed with glory and with righteousness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that they are a royal priesthood, that they are a peculiar people. I thank you, God, that somebody is embracing their peculiarity, that somebody is embracing their distinct abilities, that somebody is embracing maybe even the label of being strange and weird. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for diverse anointings coming to surface, walking boldly in their gifts and in their calling. Hallelujah. Starting right in their own backyard. I thank you, Jesus. I've done to the best of my ability to express what I believe that you have given me this evening. And I thank you for ministering to your people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.